Hey everybody, this is Ian O'Byrne. I'll be your instructor for 326 and 687. Uh, this class is all online, so I want to take an opportunity to give you an overview of what the expectations are in the class and try to hopefully answer some questions as we get started. Um, once again, the class is all online, so sort of, you know, part of the challenge that we have is that people sometimes get confused or they feel like they're out of the loop um, or there's uh, too much com confusion and complexity um, because we don't see each other face to face. Um, and so I built in things to try and alleviate some of those concerns. But once again, um, you know, I appreciate the persistence and the flexibility that all of you will show as you work in this online environment. Um, and keep in mind that these are some of the, the struggles that our children have also as they use digital text and tools and they think about instructional uses for technology. So once again, my name is Ian O'Byrne. Um, easiest way to get in touch with me is through my email address. Uh, my phone number is listed there. It's pretty much pointless to call that. Um, if you leave a message, I won't see until I'm back into my office. Um, so that really is not one of the good ways to get in touch with me. Uh, email is the best, but then another fantastic way to get in touch with me is through Google Hangouts. Uh, Google Hangout, uh, if you search for it online, you can go to the website hangouts.google.com. Um, you can also, and I definitely uh, think that this is a good opportunity for you, use the Android app. So if you're on your Android phone or your Android tablet, or if you're on iOS, or you have an iPad or an iPhone, um, you can install the app. If you look me up using oberni at cfc.edu, and if you sign in using your CFC credentials, um, then you can uh, keep in touch with me. So what you can do through Hangouts is you can send me a text message. I'll get this on the computer. I'll get it on my cell phone. I'll get it on my tablets. Um, if needed, you can call me um, or we can video chat. So most students, as you, you can see, what they'll do is they'll text message me asking questions um, pretty much all day, of uh, uh, all time of day. Um, and they will ask questions about when things are due or something's not working right on the Oaks or a link doesn't work or a, a general question. And I can nip that in the bud right away. If there's a real issue and you need support, we can video chat and I can try and walk you through um, what you need to do. Um, at the same time, one of the things that I will do throughout the semester is we'll have once a week like an open office hour um, where I'll record like a video lecture and you can show up if you if you want to, but if you don't uh, need to, you don't have to. Um, so it's a way for me to use some video conferencing, text messaging to support you. So once again, it's Google Hangouts. Um, if you wanted to with me, um, like I said before, the easiest way is email or through Google Hangouts. Pretty much pointless to show up at my office right now or or call me up. Uh, the description is all there. What I want to do is take a little bit of time to show you the assignments and then how these assignments will live once we're in Oaks. So uh, the way that this class is set up is a very, very short, short sequence of time. We basically start on the 5th. Uh, and we go until, I believe it's August 5th when this thing ends. Let me double check while I'm here. So I, I put it on here as the third, so that, that Thursday. So the way that I see this course basically being structured is that we'll have four modules or four weeks for the class. We'll start on Wednesdays, so each module or week will start on a Wednesday. We'll go to Tuesday uh, as the end of that week. Uh, it'll be, you know, Tuesday night at midnight, so the end of day. Um, I'm not sitting up at 12.01 to see if you turn in materials, but please understand that Oaks is keeping track of this stuff. Um, so we'll start on Wednesdays. The module or the week will wrap up on Tuesday nights. It is expected that you'll check in on Oaks or get in touch with me or, or you know, watch one of the screencasts. I would say four or five times a week because it's such a short time schedule. I would not save all of the work per module per week uh, for one day. That's a, a recipe for disaster. So I would say Wednesday nights, we Wednesday we start, uh, Tuesday nights we end. Um, I have the materials up for module one or week one already. Uh, I don't have two, three, and four in there yet because I don't want to put too much in to confuse everyone. But you'll see that we'll start on the 5th and we'll go to the 11th. We'll start up on the 12th. We'll go to the 18th. Start up on the 19th and go to the 25th. And then start up on the 26th and go to the 3rd. 
So really that last week will end up on the 31st, 1st, that Tuesday, and then we'll have two days to like clean up and wrap up loose ends. Um, so it's a pretty brisk pace to get things done. So if I go back to the syllabus and I look at um, how things are scaled up, there's uh, all of the assignments interact and relate to one another. So the main assignment that you'll work on over this semester is we will be building up a website. This website will be a digital portfolio. It'll be a learning hub for you. It'll be a place that you can, uh, you will leave all materials from this class on your website. And it is hoped that you'll take this website to your future classes and use it to share materials. And then uh, as you're in your classroom or if you're currently teaching, you'll be able to use these materials on your website uh, to interact with your students or interact with your peers or interact and communicate with parents. Um, so the main project for all of this is the website. As we get started, I will start to ask you about, um, you'll see the six word memoir, who you are, who you'd like to be, um, that assignment is coming. But I'll basically walk you uh, through the website and the construction of the website. I'll take a look at that once we get into Oaks and dig in a little bit deeper. Uh, you will also be blogging. You'll be creating content and sharing content online. And the challenge is that you'll be building up your website over the course of the semester, but at the same time, you have to complete assignments that will become the content that lives on your website. So what we have set up is you'll, you'll do work in a Google Doc. You'll share the Google Doc in the discussion forums in Oaks with your colleagues, with me. We will all give each other feedback. We'll improve that content. And then as you're building up the website over the semester, you'll slowly take time to copy paste materials from the Google Docs over to your website and let it live online on your website. At the end of the whole semester, you will have your website uh, finally assessed at the end as a summative assessment by me uh, and receive that broad grade for uh, the website. Uh, so you'll be blogging over time that will live in Google Docs. Uh, we will also be using a tool called Hypothesis. Hypothesis is an uh, it's an open source markup or annotation tool. So as you read online, as you search online, as you're learning online, I will expect that you'll leave uh, digital breadcrumbs out there on the internet to show where you've been. Um, you'll also be able to see where everybody else in the course has been, what we're all reading, and you'll be able to keep track of what's happening as we all read online. And I have materials out there on how to use Hypothesis. I understand there will be a learning curve with Hypothesis. Um, and at the same time, I'll put out a video uh, making it much more simple uh, to figure out how to use Hypothesis. So that's one of the other tools we use. For 326 and 687, the primary area of focus in this class is uh, instructional uses of technology and framing it as a literacy, um, you know, as technology as literacy use. So for that, we focus on the, the web literacy work from Mozilla um, and they frame it as reading, writing, and either participating or connecting online. Um, so each week we'll look at what does it mean to be an online reader or what does it mean to be an online writer? And then how would I make that happen in my classroom? So each week you will read and reflect in a blog post about what it means to be a reader online, but then you'll also create a lesson plan showing us how you would do that in your current or future classroom. And we'll talk more about that as we dig into it. The last major assignment is those lesson plans and work that you do for the web literacy content, you will also be constructing a, a giant unit plan, uh, a unit plan that you would use in your current or future classroom with your children it has to be age appropriate, content specific, and you want to think about, okay, what is an area of interest, of student interest and inquiry that I would use um, in my classroom for teaching and learning, and how would I fold these digital texts and tools into that unit? We have a lot of scaffolding built up to help you through the unit plan. We'll dig in deeper, but I just want you to know what we're going to be building over the course of the semester. So once again, you'll have a website that you build up over time. You will be reading and searching and sifting online and reflecting and putting that out into blog posts. Uh, you'll be thinking about web literacy content and figuring out, okay, where does this stuff live and, and how can I um, make sense of what this would look like in my future classroom? And then the tent over top of all of that would be the unit plan. 
So you're going to walk out of this with the website, with the unit plan, with the lesson plans. You're going to have a lot of instructional content ready to go so that if you're in a classroom now, you can use it in your classroom uh, in, in future practice. But then also, if you're getting ready to enter the classroom, uh, you can think about, OK, how would I get this uh, ready to use in my classroom with future students? Um, so once again, this is an overview of the syllabus and the major assignments for the course. Um, I want a little bit of time to dig into Oaks. So if I'm signed into Oaks um, and I go to all of my classes listed, this overview is the same for 326 and 687. It's a lot of the content is similar. There are a couple differences, um, but you'll see those in your various iterations of the course. If I come to the home section, I'm going to get a general announcement. In this news uh, section, I will share general announcements, general things that people need to know. Uh, my hope is to share announcements two, maybe three times a week to give overviews. It's just an update or a status report for the class. The real course lives in the content area. So if I sign to content, I'll get an overview. Um, let me click on the overview tab. Once again, this is the same thing as the intro that we have. So I have a link to the syllabus. I have me on Hangouts and my email address. This is the stuff that we've already talked about and you've seen some of this. If, if I go to upcoming events, I can see assignments that are due soon. Um, but then if I click down and go into table of contents, you'll see that I have module one through four. Once again, because of the structure and cadence of this class, we have four weeks or four modules. So, so if I go to module one, every single one of my modules is broken down into the the first link is module and the overview of the module. Then I have read, watch, discuss, do. So I try to keep this as simple as possible so that you're not lost. Even though I think it's simple, um, I just want you to understand my thinking behind it so that I uh, so that you don't get lost in these activities. So module one is all about teaching and learning online. It's a general overview. I have your learning outcomes here. I have a video lecture, the digging deeper section to let you know where we're headed with all this. If I go into the reading section, I have five links that take you out. Uh, once again, we're going to be reading online uh, using Hypothesis. And the uh, your responsibility is to uh, read any and all of these five um, as I say in the note here, if you choose not to read some of these, that's fine with it, with me, but it is expected that you'll read, uh, you choose what you want to read from these areas, but then it's also expected that you read beyond the five that I give here. Um, so many students will read three or four of these. Many of you are high flying students. You'll read all five backwards and forwards. Um, and then it's expected that you search and sift and synthesize online texts to make sense of what you think the prompt or the this the the challenge or the the problem statement of the first module is okay so you're going to be reading these and marking up and annotating using hypothesis i have a link there on how to use hypothesis i will have a video that i share on uh, making hypothesis very simple to understand so you get through the reading part if you go into watch i have uh, five links out to YouTube videos. This first link on understanding by design, it's actually a playlist. So it's a couple videos. Uh, watch any and all of these videos to help you make sense of where we're going with the module. Uh, so I have uh, five links out to reading posts. I have five or more videos for you to check out. Once again, this is not an exhaustive list. Uh, I expect that you go out and you find other materials because you most likely will have questions that I don't answer and I know that there's questions in there that I don't answer with my materials. And I want you to, you to find the answer. Those are the skill sets that we need our children to have. Then if we go to discuss, in discuss, all I'm sharing here uh, is the usage of hypothesis to read across uh, the internet and answer these questions that come up in the modules. So we will be using hypotheses to read and mark up. Uh, as you read hypothesis, you have the opportunity to, as you mark up text to add a hashtag. I want everyone to mark up and annotate the text publicly. And I want you to include the CFC edu hashtag in the post and the markup and the annotations so we can see each other's work. 
Also, uh, I want you to include any other relevant hashtags that you might need for your work. This will be much more clear, hopefully, in that hypothesis post and in the video. I understand hypothesis is a tool that not many of us have an opportunity to use and we have to wrap our heads around. That's why we're taking the time in this class to, to use that tool and make sense of it. And then the last part of each module, once again, we have the intro and then we have read, watch, discuss, do. The last part is the assignments. These are the deliverables for each module for each week. So as I said before, all of your assignments will start off as Google Docs. You'll uh, write them up as a Google Doc. You're going to share them in discussion forums so other people in the class will be able to read and they are expected to read and respond and give you feedback to your content. I will read and respond and give you feedback. Um, and then as your website builds up, you will copy paste the content from your, from your Google Docs over to your website. So the, the Google Doc is like a holding ground where everything gets polished up and ready to go. And once it's perfect, then it's getting moved over to your website once your website is a little bit more viable. So you have three uh, major you know, deliverables for module one. The first one is as we begin to develop our website, you're gonna write up a six word memoir. And that's pretty simple. It's think about yourself. It's pretty simple, but it's a, a complex assignment at the same time. Think about yourself. I want you to identify yourself or define yourself in six words, no more, no less. I want you to think about who you are, who you would like to be, um, and write that all out in six words. Many people will share more in the Google Doc, but minimally I want those six words so that you can think about who you want to be. Um, also with this, um, and that's not really part of the assignment, but I want you to sort of jump into it over the course of this week. Um, there are several free online tools that I've used in the past for creating websites. There's Google Sites, there's Wikispaces, there's Wix, there's Weebly. Um, all of them are fantastic. They have all they they each have their own positives and negatives. Um, the, in this course this semester, we will be using WordPress at WordPress.com. Uh, you do not have to use WordPress. If you want to use Google Sites, if you want to use Wix or Weebly, feel free. Um, I can help direct you to materials online to build it, but also most of these things are pretty intuitive. You'll be able to figure it out on your own. I will be providing granular advice on WordPress.com and building up a site there. So that's where my focus will be throughout the course, but you're more than welcome, welcome to use the other sources. So this week, I want you to bookmark about an hour or two of your time to go into the other spaces and play. Create an account at Google Sites, you already got one. Create an account at Wikispaces or Wix or Weebly and start to create a website and see what it looks like. And you might decide that, hey, I like Wix better than WordPress. I like Weebly better than WordPress. If you wanna go down that path, that's fine. I've had numerous students throughout this course and other versions of this course that have used Weebly very successfully. Okay, I know about Wix, I know about Weebly because of other students that have gone in and used it instead of WordPress, okay? I will use WordPress, I will focus on WordPress for this class, there's reasons why, um, but if you wanna use the other tools, that's fine, okay? So that's the first one is six word memoir, play a little bit. The second uh, real deliverable for module one is the reflection post. So. Once again, you're, you're in module one, you're reading across five or more websites, you're marking up and you're annotating in hypothesis, you're making sense of the direction that I'm heading in this, in this first module. And then you're watching videos that I share on YouTube, you're looking on YouTube and, 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 and you're finding other content online that helps you think about it. And over the course of the week, you're sort of making sense of, okay, what does he really mean by teaching and learning with tech? Like, what are the real issues here? And, and how can I make this happen in my classroom? So you're thinking about that unit plan and, and ways you'd like to include or fold this into uh, current or future instruction. So you're thinking about this over the course of the week. What I want you to do is at some point this week, I want you to, in a Google Doc, synthesize all of that together. Make sense of what you've learned. And if you look at the, the, the reflection post assignment here, okay, I don't give you a prompt. 
I don't give you a question that I want you to answer. Um, and there's a reason for that. I want this to be inquiry based learning. I want you to define what you really want to learn here. Okay. What did you learn? What are the bigger questions that you have? Um, and, and this is once again, as you learn online, I give you guidance. I show you five prompts. I, I show you five posts to read. I give you a couple videos to watch. I give you the intro lecture. So I pretty much give you some structure to the direction we're headed. Um, but I want you to really define like, what is the question and what did you learn this week? Um, once again, that is in a, uh, a Google doc. Uh, uh, you put it in a Google doc and then you share it out through the discussion forum. We give you feedback once it's polished up. And once your website's ready to go, you're going to copy paste it over. Um, and once again, I don't, I don't see people really copy pasting content over to their website until weeks two, three, four, um, because you need that time to build up your website. If you're rocking and rolling in your website in week one, awesome for you. Uh, the last real assignment for this is the start of our inquiry based unit plan. So I have a unit project planning workbook there that we're going to complete over the course of the semester and scaffold your development of this unit plan. Um, but as we get started, what I want you to think about is, okay, well, what would I like to teach in my current or future classroom? What would be something of high interest to students? And as you start planning out this unit plan, you know, the unit plan is going to have lesson plans. It's going to have web literacies baked into it. You're going to think about instructional uses for technology, but it really has to be based on student interest, student inquiry. It has to facilitate student inquiry. Inquiry, And you want to think about something that is is relevant to content standards and frameworks. Okay. So you're going to think about how would I fold in technology into things that I currently have to teach or things that I think that my students really would want to learn. So we're going to use the understanding by design framework that you'll learn about in module one. And you're going to make sense of basically, where do I want to go with my students? What's the ending look like? And how do I get my children there? So the last real deliverable for module one is starting to frame that out. You'll put it in a Google Doc, you'll share it with us, and then it'll get folded into your unit plan workbook and all your, your website um, throughout the semester. So module one, you're basically doing the six word memoir, sending it out, getting feedback, giving each other feedback, You're doing a reflection or synthesis of module one, you're sending it out, getting feedback, it'll ultimately get moved to your website and all Google Docs. Uh, uh, then you're doing the intro, you're answering questions about, you know, thinking about understanding by design of your unit plan and getting ready to plan this whole unit out, thinking about what you like to teach in your classroom. This lives in Google Doc and you share it out and you get feedback and it goes to your website. And the last major thing that you're doing for module one, you're pl playing with different website platforms, thinking about, okay, what might I like to use as I build up my website? So once again, this is uh, the overview. This is what Oaks looks like for 326 and 687. We have different modules. Module one will give us the, the first click will give us overview. Read, watch, discuss, do will give us um, the key components of what I want you to do for each module. We have four modules. The first one is filled out for week one. Two, three, and four are not there yet, but two you'll see the beginning of next week. Um, so that the people that are really itching to move ahead can see the direction that we're heading, um, because I know some of you are wired that way. Um, and once again, uh, if you need me, we will put these videos out and I will have an open office hour or lecture so we can dial in together and, and answer, uh, ask, answer questions. But if you need me, shoot me an email. If you need me, send me a hangout uh, through a Google. Google Hangouts, sign in with your CFC credentials, uh, and I can text message or video conference your questions. Uh, if you need me, I'm there for you. Um, so once again, my name is Ian O'Byrne. I'm really excited to uh, to work with you this semester and, and learn together. And I'll see you in Oaks.